let's talk about fixtures now. Let's talk about fixtures. An item that was once personal property, but it's been converted to real property by being permanently affixed to the realty. My fence, right? All the parts that I bought for the fence, as long as it's still in my truck, it's personal property. I put it up there, I build it up, that now becomes a fixture, okay? Now it becomes a fixture because it's been converted to real property and I put it there as a permanent affixed to the realty. Right? The deck in the back of the house, the fence in the back on the side of the yard, that's now permanent, right? Refrigerators are personal property. For years, they were considered fixtures because of the expense and everything else. They are now considered personal property. But what if I'm a buyer? If I'm a buyer and I want that refrigerator in particular, can um, the seller leave it? Sure, they can. They can leave it, right? But it has to be written into the contract. It has to be specific. So if you and I talk about it, and come closing day, I, you go in there and the refrigerator's gone. If we don't specifically have it in the contract, you don't have a leg to stand on. It has to be enclosed in the four walls of the contract. Now, let's move to the bathroom. And you just got a brand new claw tub. Really nice. And you, as the seller, want to keep the claw tub. You want to take it with you. It is what? It's a fixture, right? It's built in, it's heavy, it's permanent, it's considered a fixture. Can you um, take it with you? You have to have agreement to take it with you and it has to be in the contract. I have the right as the seller to take that fixture, take that, I'm sorry, take that refrigerator and take it out and do that, just move it, okay? And will not leave it. But if I'm the buyer and I want that refrigerator, I have to make sure that it's written into the contract so that we agree that it's gonna stay there or the claw tub or the whirlpool tub or you know uh, window treatments or anything else that would be considered a fixture. All right, so now you say, well, what's considered a fixture? How do we figure that out, right? It gets a little complicated. Well, not really. We have what's called the total circumstances test. And what's going to happen is when these arguments go to court, we're going to end up in court. This is a legal test applied by the courts to find out if an item is a fixture. Now, all four of these have to apply for this item to be a fixture. All four, okay? So the first one is the intent of the annexer. We put in a claw tub upstairs. We intended it to stay when we bought it, right? We didn't intend it to leave. Let's just use that, okay? So the intent, we put it in there. We built window treatments. We put in custom shades, right? All of these things match the house. We built one of those awnings on the back of the house, one of those custom awnings that fits the windows perfectly. The intent is what? For it to stay, right? So there you go. The relationship, the R, it's I-R-M-A. The R in this is who put it up there, the relationship. Is it an owner? If the owner put it up there, it's a fixture. If the tenant put it up there, it could be personal property, it could not be. You'd have to explain that, all right? Now, usually if an, a tenant puts something up there, it belongs to the owner. It belongs to the owner. Anything that's large like that, anything that's custom, it is going to stay with the house, okay? Now, the M is method of attachment or method of annexation. How permanent? If we put custom, um, if we put a custom shade outside, right? One of those awnings, and it's screwed to the house, and it's got mechanic, it's got electricity run, so you can use it and run up and down. That's a pretty rock solid installation, is it not? That's pretty much made to stay in that particular case. Right? Um, uh, TVs that attach to the wall would go with the house if the owner doesn't put it in a contract. The TV would not go with the house. The mount that's on would go with the house. Now, if the t TV is personally attached to the wall, then mm -hmm. that stays. But if the TV is attached to a mount, 
the TV goes, but the mount stays. Okay. okay. So that is, uh, again, <clears throat> a point of contention. You just, if you want the TV though, you make sure that you're, as an agent, as a broker, it's your job to protect your buyer, right? If your buyer wants this, have it written into the contract. And that's why we're going over this, all right? Um, so method of annexation, how permanent is it? The mount that's on the wall, man, that's there. That's got four screws in there into the, into the studs. It ain't going anywhere, right? The TV is just a quick little hook and taking it off. Not big, not a big deal, right? Now the A in here says the adaptation to the real estate. Is it customized? Is it built into the property, right? If we have custom built bookcases built, right? They're attached to the wall. That is, that's permanent, right? Um, if we have a shower and we go in and put a new bathroom in there and we um, put in all new glass doors and we put in a new tub and the whole thing, right? And we have a, a, um, we have a cabinet that's got all kinds of stuff in there and it's attached to the wall. That's there to stay. That's a fixture, right? Ceiling fans are a fixture. Ceiling fans are a fixture. Right, they're meant to stay. They're in there with the hole in the hole. All right, now, so if we're doing this as personal property, or we're doing this as a house, all four of these have to be point towards a fixture in order for it to um, remain a fixture. Okay, so it has to be put up there to to be permanent. All right, the, it has to be either the owner putting it up. Right, if the owner put it up, that's the that's the relationship. If it's put up by screws, screws and bolts, that's method of annexation. It's meant to stay, right? And is it customized? If you put a customized awning outside measures to this window, I'd say plantation shutters that are in your um, in the windows, right? Those are permanent. They're built for that window, okay? Built for that window. So that would be our total circumstances test. That is Irma. You may hear that again, okay? Irma. The leases we use, any changes to the property, our homeowners have to approve, but we have tenants who charge, who change stuff all the time. Yeah, we can go to court for anything and everything, right? And if you're in property management or you're doing real estate, we spend a lot of too much time in court. We're talking in generalities here, but you got to read these leases because the leases have specific language in them that says you can do stuff and you can't. And if, you're, if your landlord is not one who's particularly um, aggressive, you know, nothing happens. But if your landlord wants that property back in the way he gave it to you, you could end up in court and you could be ending up replacing it. So again, it depends on the language in the contract and every contract is different, every one of them. So gotta be heads up on that. So check what you're, what's in your lease agreement. Let's look at this. We have some fixtures. Now, I already told you that refrigerator there is personal property, right? Personal property because it's on wheels and it goes out and it is expensive and for all those reasons, all right? So this is personal property. This dishwasher is installed pretty tightly here. That's going to stay. That's going to be considered a fixture, okay? We consider it a fixture. Um, faucets, things of that nature are going to stay. Built-in microwave is going to stay. It's installed, right? Now, if this microwave is on the counter, much like this, uh, all of this stuff that's sitting here now, coffee pot and et cetera, that would be personal property. But it's not. It's installed. It's meant to stay, right? Meant to stay. That oven is meant to stay. It's built in there, okay? Built in there. So same thing with this bathroom. Now, if you notice, this bathtub is built in, customized, right? It's customized. That tub's not going anywhere. It's built to stay. Glass shower doors obviously leak over into the um, um, into the tub area, all right? Those are, doors aren't going anywhere. Um, this cabinet that's up here on the wall, that's not going anywhere. Now, two things. You notice this? I would say that those blinds, back, or that window treatment back there, they look pretty custom, don't they? If I was just looking at this without the documents, I would say that these blinds and this window treatment up here, both custom to this window. I would consider them both a fixture. Now, if that owner wanted to take this ugly lamp with them, I would be happy for them to take it. But that being said, I believe that's a fixture also. 
okay? Um, that's not going anywhere. This bowl, anything up on the counter is going to, um, that's personal property. All these little knickknacks on the shelves, that's personal property also, all right? All right, so, and again, again this window, right, customized. Again, uh, right, furniture would go. This, this is attached, this wall unit is attached. That would stay, that's a fixture. These lighting is uh, attached, 1950 something, right? This lighting units, they are attached. Um, now, look at these blinds here for these two windows. They look like they're cut pretty perfectly for those two windows, right? Just from looking at these pictures, I would say that those two are made for those windows. Therefore, I would consider those fixtures. The curtains, they can go. They're not attached to anything, right? There's drapery underneath these, uh, under here. These rods probably should stay if there are any. Um, this box, these shelves here, if these shelves are not attached, right? The TV can go if it's not attached. If these shelves are not attached, they can go too. They're personal property. However, if they're attached to the floor or they're attached to the wall, they stay. Depends on method of attachment and the intent. What is it, right? So those are, um... okay, let's look outside though. This mailbox here on the house, that's installed, right? That's installed. It's not going anywhere. That's a fixture. All this stuff over here is, a, is personal. This big board on the side here, the shade block, it's only on two hooks. It's not permanently attached. Washers and dryers um, are personal property. The attachments, um, you know, the wall stuff, those are usually uh, fixtures, but the washers and dryers go to, um, they are personal property. Yeah. Now you can negotiate them, put them in a contract. You're allowed to negotiate anything. And as long as you have a buyer and seller who would agree, we can make the washer and dryer fixtures, leave them there. Same thing with the refrigerator. As long as we have a buyer and seller agree inside the contract, it's got to be in writing. If you and I have a 20 minute conversation about it, never put it in the contract and you don't come up, you don't have the, um, uh, you don't have the uh, washer and dryer when you move in. We didn't put in a contract. Doesn't matter. Our conversation never happened. Got to be. Um, see this window air conditioner that's kind of hidden over here or this door, this built in air conditioner, the one that's built through the wall. I'm going to say that's a fixture. Yes. Considering if I took that, there'd be a big old hole in my wall. All right. So that is a fixture that's built to stay. Same as this little box here. Mm -hmm. Uh, window units is that one in particular is built in the wall. So that's meant to stay. That is by annexation. We put that in there to stay because the gearing on this particular box is built in. But if it's just in a regular window, if it's just hanging out the window, those are personal property. They're not permanently attached, right? They're not permanently attached. So window units would be, um, would be personal property. But if it's built in like this, yeah, no, that's staying. Each and every one of us have ever has visited a pizzeria, yes? You've walked in to go get your favorite pizza. And now I want you to think, think about that in your mind and think that uh, Umberto went in there and that was just an empty shell of a building, just an empty shell. So now he visions the pizzeria in this restaurant. Does he have to come out of pocket for some stuff? He's gonna build this place now, right? He got an empty shell, he got an empty shell. So think about it coming in. There's tables and chairs that, that my guy has to build. I know an Umberto, so I, I was using his name, but anyway, the pizzeria owner has to build, get tables and chairs, counters. How about those two pizza ovens that he's gotta buy? or lease. Those things don't come cheap, right? How about the, sto uh, the stove and the, um, the ice box and the counters, the stainless steel counters and the meat slicer if he needs it or any of the other stuff, right? There's a lot, there's a lot, right? All of those things regardless are considered trade fixtures. They belong to the pizzeria owner until their pr personal property while he's got the lease going. Now, if he doesn't own the building, he's leased it. 
let's say he's got a five-year lease. They are personal property right up to the last day of the lease. On the day after that lease ends, if he has not taken that stuff out and we put, fix the walls and the floors, he's got to fix the walls and the floors and he's got to get the stuff out. If he leaves it there, it goes from his personal property to real property of the landlord. So on the day the lease ends, the day after the lease ends, now all of that equipment becomes the landlord's. Umberto loses it all. So that's why you see these places close before their lease ends so they can get the equipment out. Um, we had a 16, C, a 16 theater movie theater down here that in the middle of the month just decided to lock the doors. Well, it didn't make any sense until you start thinking about how much equipment is in a 16 theater movie theater, right? If they're leased, you got to try to give them back to the leasing company um, and see what uh, you might lose money on your lease, but you can give them back. They belong to the landlord if they're in there, right? And then the leasing company is going to sue you. Think about what's inside of 16 theater seats. You got projection of material, you got speakers, you got, um, you know, you have seating that you might have to take out, you have screens. What about the concession stands? You got all of those concession stands that you put in there that they got to get out. Usually they have a sale, try to get rid of them, right? Cash boxes, things of that nature. All of those TVs that are around, monitors, they all get put in there and you got to take them out. <clears throat> if you don't own the bowling alley, any of you have been bowling lately? Imagine all the equipment that's in a bowling alley. It's got to come out before the end of the lease. If those things are all leased, much like Jonathan asked, you're going to be the, the tenant's going to be responsible for paying off that lease until that lease expires or try to work out an agreement to try to get it back to them. Right. The owners aren't going to pay for it. The owners aren't going to pay for it. All right. So it can be attached to the rental property. You can do anything you want. Now, when I take those pizza ovens out, going back to our pizzeria, I'm going to have damage on the floor and damage on the wall. Right. I mean, that only makes sense because that's how I hook them up. I have to fix that damage. All right. But if I don't um, if I don't take it out before the end of that lease, it becomes real property of the landlord automatically. That's what a trade fixture does. This is a small kitchen. Imagine the expense of just that. Whoop, imagine the expense of just a small kitchen. I, I can't imagine what the cost of this big ventilation unit is. Right. It's thousands of dollars. And then you got to put it in. Right. All these pots and pans, equipment. You got a. Um, um, you got a big oven here, commercial oven. You got stoves, you have deep fryers, you got counter space, you got shelves, you got a microwave. There's just in this little, this isn't any bigger than 10 by 10. And we got thousands of dollars worth of stuff in uh, yeah, commercial equipment. We got to get it out of there. We got to get it out of here or we lose it. Okay. Or we lose it. So it can be quite extensive. All right. The day after that lease expires, the this all of this equipment becomes the real property of the landlord. You can't take it out anymore. It's personal property while you're doing business during the course of the lease. Agricultural fixtures. We have. Remember, we said we had tenant farmers before for um, uh, for crops. Well, we have tenant farmers for animals. Goats, sheep, lambs, horses, cows. We have people who rent land, okay? Now, agricultural fixtures are different than trade fixtures. Jonathan owns the land and I lease it from Jonathan. Jonathan gives me a long-term lease and I build a, um, if I build a barn for the horses and I put a lean-to out there for protection for, you know, the sheep to go under and I build a, if I put in, um, uh, an aquifer so that they can get water, or I put piping in so that we have something that would be there, um, or some storage units that would keep food in there. Anything that I attach does not belong to me. Before I said I can go back one time and get my crops, not with agricultural fixtures. The minute I put it and attach it to that property, it belongs to the owner, which in this case would be Jonathan in our example, all right? So items attached by the tenant farmer are considered real property of the landlord. And this is just a special class of fixtures in North Carolina. 
if I'm going to put up hog barns, right? Things of that nature, um, chicken coops, things that, you know, all of those kind of things, such as this big old food trough or watering trough. If we had another one, any of this, this would stay. This belongs to the farmer, unless specifically we're in a contract, right? We're talking, I mean, we can make anything work for us, right? As long as we agree, whatever two people agree to, then that's fine, as long as it's in writing. Right, it has to be in writing to be enforceable. Um, so if we have to, then that's fine as long as we agree. But in generalities, agricultural fixtures would stay under the general purposes of the law. So we learned about Irma. We learned about um, trade fixtures, agricultural fixtures. What happens there? What happens if you purchase a house and your heat pump goes in your house? and it's outside. And those things aren't cheap. If you've ever had to replace one, they, they don't come easy. The company that replaces the heat pump says, we'll give you five months in payments. You pay us over, I mean, we'll give you five years in payments. Pay us over five years. And after the third year, you sell a house. After the third year, you pay the house, and you sell a house. Who has to pay for the rest of it? The person whose loan it is, right? It's personal property until it's paid off. So in that particular case, um, these are considered personal property until the unit is paid off. Now, if you come back, if you don't pay it off, let's say you go to closing and they don't catch that, and a new buyer moves in and you still got two years to pay on that heat pump. Well, what happens is they can come and repossess the heat pump, even if the new buyers are there because it is personal property of the person who took out the loan according to the North Carolina Uniform Commercial Code, okay? You took out the loan, it is personal property until it's paid in full, all right? So your heat pump, your dishwasher, hot water heater, that's why at the closing, they're gonna do a title search, they're gonna do a, um, um, they're gonna do a record search, they're gonna see if you have any liens against you, this would be a lien, um, to see, make sure you close it up. Make sure that you pay all of these things and you're gonna to have to pay for it at closing. But if it's missed, that company has their every right to come and take it back. And therefore you'll come home as the buyer and you'll be cold one day and there won't be any heat on in your house and it'll be the middle of January and you'll wonder why your heat's not working. And then you'll go out and you'll see where that slab is, where that used to be a heat pump. They took it back, they repossessed it and they can. All right, so whoever filed that, right? Whoever got that security agreement, it's personal property until it's paid off, right? If you leave, you still got to pay it. And usually what will happen is the attorney's going to check for any liens and you're going to have to pay it out of your proceeds. You won't even have a choice. You won't even have a choice. You're going to have, it'll come right out of the proceeds of the, of the property. Um, a good attorney. Uh, every attorney is different. So in this particular case, Uniform Commercial Code, all right? Um, Safe says creditor may remove the item on default. So they can repossess it. Now we have personal property. See this vehicle up here? That's personal property, right? That, isn't that personal property? That um, mobile home, it has an axle on it. It's got, uh, it had wheels on it. They took it off of there. But you can convert this to real property. There's a few things you have to do, okay? so. This thing can travel, right? At one point, this was on the road, pulling from here to there to wherever. And HUD gave it a sticker that says it is inhabitable, right? It is inhabitable. I want to make this real property. I don't want it on the road anymore. There's some things I can do here, all right? So this is built to fed the HUD standard. So I have a little red HUD sticker on here that's going to say anybody can live here. This is a livable property. But if I want it to get, to, if I want to take it off the road and make it permanent, I have to take off the axle. I have to take off the, the hitch. I have to take off the tires. And I have to put this on a permanent foundation, which I own. All right. I have to own the land. I can't lease the land. I have to own it. All right. So I think on our next slide, it says, we have to remove the wheels, axle, and the moving hitch. We have to attach to a permanent foundation on the land owned by the owner of a home, 
right? If you own this, you have to own that land. And you have to file an affidavit for con conversion of that DMV. You have to cancel that motor vehicle title. All right. So you can do these things and make this a and make this a permanent real property. All right. But until then, it's it's personal property. It's personal property. Now you may not remove that red sticker. That HUD sticker has to stay on there. Has to stay on there. Okay. So this is registered by DMV, right? And it's factory built. It's built well. They're all built well. Uh, some of them are really nice inside, all right? Got an on a permanent chassis, but they can go from here to there. Now, the other side of that is there are factory built homes that are considered modular. And these things are brought to site and, and put together on site, right? Much like you see here. Now, I don't care where you go. If you drive past new construction, right after they pour the foundation and they put the sidewalls up, I'm willing to bet if you drive past the front yard, you're gonna see a stack of trusses, roof trusses on the ground already made. They're not building them stick by stick anymore. They're building those trusses on a factory somewhere. And they're building them up and they're dropping them so that they all they have to do is put them up on the house, nail them up, okay? They're not building them on site, right? Yeah, exactly what they're doing. So they're putting them up there. So, but this is already, this is not a DMV house. This is modular housing, factory built to state building codes, um, state inspection label with a serial number, all right? And as soon as they're assembled on site, they are real property. They do not change, okay? They are real property. However, this other one that had wheels and an axle this was personal property until we made these changes, right? until we made those changes. We have to remove the wheels, take the axle off, remove the hitch, the moving hitch, which is right here, right? Take the, uh, attach it to the permanent foundation. This is not, these blocks are not permanent foundations. That doesn't work, right? You have to get regular piers in there, support piers, and it has to be on land that you own. You can't lease that land. All right, and then you have to cancel the title. If you like this video, feel free to share it with a friend. For more real estate education content, please subscribe to the channel. From all of us at Seacoast Real Estate Academy, thank you for watching.